there he goes. He's a short man with a beard and strands of gray in his brown hair. I've seen him many times before with his rough-hewn features, always walking down the sidewalk with his small bag of laundry and his small see-through container of powder wash soap. He's always wearing the same pair of oil-stained, torn-up blue jeans and a sweat-stained white t-shirt. Every three days or so, he walks down the sidewalk with his bag of laundry. Sometimes I drive by and he's talking to himself as he's walking down the sidewalk. He always looks angry or upset, like he hates the world. I've never seen anyone offer him a ride. I guess why would they? I saw him get off a city bus downtown once. One day last week, I followed him to the laundromat to see what it was he was washing and if anyone talked to him. When I walked into the laundromat with my own little pile of dirty clothes, I saw him sitting on top of a folding table in the corner. He was all alone. I wanted to walk up to him and start talking when his washing machine beeped off and he jumped down off of the table to get his clothes. He struggled with it for a minute until the tub finally quit spinning and he could safely reach in and pull out all of his clothes. I slowly started to put my laundry on to wash as he pulled out of his washing machine a single purple towel. I waited for him to pull out more clothes, but he closed the washing machine lid and walked over to the dryers. I quickly ran over to the washing machine he had just used and peeked inside to see if there was anything left. There was nothing, only a shiny, empty tub that smelled like powdered soap and water. He then proceeded to raise the purple towel into the air as if to carefully inspect it for any new tears or shredded ends that the washing machine may have inflicted upon it. He spent nearly 20 minutes inspecting the purple towel this way. I started to inspect the purple towel with the most careful eye, too. I could almost see the complicated life threads of this strange man interwoven somewhere in there. He looked over in my direction twice and then continued to carefully inspect the purple towel with a serene indifference to everyone else around him. The precious purple towel was all that mattered to the man. An elderly woman passed behind him, and he threw a glowering stare in her direction. Then, without further notice to myself or anyone else around him, he gently placed the purple towel inside the dryer and closed it. He put two quarters into the slot and turned it on. The dryer roared to life, and he placidly stepped away from it, admiring the spinning purple cloth as it was tossed around inside the dryer. He walked back to the folding table and sat down. A young Hispanic man walked in through the glass door next to his table and said to him, Can you spare some change, mister? I've been working all day and I ain't got no money and I need to get home, but I live too far away from here to walk. The man looked up and just stared at the younger man for about 15 seconds. The young Hispanic man nonchalantly shrugged his shoulders and moved on to the next person in the laundromat. Slowly running his fingers through his coarse, gray, fragmented hair, the man looked over at the purple towel spinning around inside the dryer. A look of victory appeared on his face, as if he had just won a major battle. Then, he stared at the young Hispanic man as he walked out of the laundromat with no change for the bus. Finally, the dryer turned off, and he went to get his purple towel. Before folding it into a perfect little square, he twisted it and flipped it in the air a few times. He carefully placed the purple towel back into his laundry bag that didn't seem to do the neat little purple square much justice and walked out the door.